If you're new to the world of web design and web development, it's basically people give you awards on how nice or usable your website is. And you might be asking, do people actually give awards to a website? Well, <laughs> yes, people do. And I think it's pretty cool. So for these awards, depending on which award websites you're on, there's a lot of them. For these sites, they generally have juries to rank your website under a certain criteria. And that could be the UI, UX, creativity, usability, blah, 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 blah. there's just so many criteria, but they all mean the same thing to avoid copying each other. Now that's a short introduction. Let's get into the meat of things. Well, there's quite a few negative things to talk about award-winning websites, but there's these three things that these websites sometimes do really bad on. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind has to be the usability and the user experience issues in these kind of websites. A lot of these sites are not necessarily something that you're already used to, like these kind of normal websites that you see every day. Instead, they break conventions quite frequently where your navbar navigation is hidden on desktop screens, where there's just a lot of horizontal scroll hijacking. Some of the award winning websites focus so much on aesthetics that I'm not even sure what the purpose of the website is or what services that they're offering and there's no clear call to action at all. Sometimes I just want to go on a website and quickly scan through the information I need and off I go with the information I wanted without ever thinking about the website again. The other common theme among award-winning websites are loading screens. It's really good for UX if you're actually loading the contents with a lot of JavaScript so the users know what to expect. But what I see often is that award-winning websites just have loading screens just for the sake of UI and having that cool loading effect. Surely just content websites like these do not need to load this much, right? Some of them take like three to five seconds to load and I just want to see the contents of your website as quickly as possible. I personally think these pretty loading screens should just load faster or provide something meaningful like encapsulating an essence of a brand better or even providing some useful information for your users. Overall, so many of these websites are definitely not suitable for something that you would use on a daily basis like a corporate e-commerce website or a website with hundreds of thousands or millions of users. That leads us to a more technical side of things. In terms of award-winning websites, they make my computer go But in all seriousness, a lot of these websites have big performance issues. And it's not just an overstatement, a lot of them have these issues. Most of the time, this doesn't really affect me since I have pretty decent Wi-Fi here in Australia. But if I were in a place that had bad Wi-Fi or mediocre Wi-Fi, I wouldn't have the best browsing experience. If you're a developer like me who developed these kind of websites, I really recommend going over a pre-launch checklist to test out the performance of your website. Or what I found especially helpful was consistently to Lighthouse check my site as I develop it so I can know which code slows down the performance of the site or other factors like accessibility or SEO. The last thing I wanna talk about is sometimes these award-winning websites can be really bad inspiration, especially for beginners. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being inspired by these award-winning websites and I think it's great, but especially if you're just starting out, over-consuming these kind of inspiration can really affect your expectations on what makes a website usable and user-friendly. The key is to strike a balance between consuming creative websites and more traditional or corporate websites so you can have the best of both worlds of creativity and functionality and also usability as well. And when I was starting out, it was my dream to create these kind of websites that are visual aesthetic and award-winning. But after reflecting back again, setting my own expectations to jump straight into building these kind of websites without understanding the fundamentals first is like digging my own grave. And that's why platforms like Skillshare exist who's also sponsoring this video. Skillshare is one of the largest platform for creatives with over a thousand of classes taught by industry pros, spanning across web development, web design, freelancing, illustration, and much more. One thing I really like about Skillshare is that they have curated learning paths that build on each other, so you don't have to jump between different resources to find a specific course that you need. As a self-taught designer and developer, I'm quite interested in this JavaScript course where I can go over the concepts again to refine my fundamentals as a developer. Same goes with this UI and UX design course, I already know the tools, but it will be really nice to learn more about design thinking and UX principles. So make sure to check out Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Don't get me wrong, I love award-winning websites and they're my daily driver for inspiration. But I think what's 
most important is how you take the inspiration to your own project. And if you really look for it, there's a lot of award-winning websites that have a really good balance between usability and aesthetics. So it really depends on which websites you take inspiration from it. And I think that's really important. It also really depends on what the objective and purpose of the website is as well. If the goal of the website is to showcase art or tell a story, these kind of award-winning websites are great to immerse your users into those kind of things. However, if your goal is to drive conversions or increase sales, maybe try to minimize these flashy visuals and non-traditional UI effects. And for these award-winning websites, despite breaking the conventions of web design and web development, I still think it's important to have these kind of websites and I think it's a good thing as well. This might sound cheesy, but these designs and creative development push the boundaries of the industry. But there's definitely a population that doesn't appreciate it due to how people commonly respond to changes in conventions. Don Norman from Design of Everyday Things book states that every time there's a break in conventions, it requires people to learn. But since they're already used to the pre-existing systems, in this case, traditional websites, they tend to spend less effort to learn or complain every time conventions are broken. And I think it totally makes sense. Although to be honest, I think it would take years and years for award-winning websites to be the normal within the web industry. But I feel like just because something is different doesn't mean it's bad. And if we kept the old, plain old, basic HTML and basic CSS, I feel like we won't be like where we are right now. These fancy websites are definitely not for everyone and I think it is a very specific niche aimed at a specific target audience or a specific goal. In my opinion, award winning websites or not does not really matter as long as you build websites with a meaningful goal and a context in mind. That way your purpose of designing and developing a website can change significantly. If your goal is deliver the best value for your clients to grow their business, you might want to take it easy with overwhelming visual effects and be really selective about it so you don't sacrifice the user experience. And if you want to push the boundaries of design or development through experimental stuff, I mean why not go all out? I personally love experimenting with crazy stuff. Or if your goal is to get hired or get freelance clients, you might want to take it easy for your users to browse through your projects. I'm sure there's so many other things I missed throughout this entire video, so I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section. So yeah, let me know, and if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you do your thing down there, or check out these videos. Yeah, other than that, till next time.